Hey analytics community, Trevor Schulte with eCapital Advisors bringing you another What's New in Cognos Analytics. Uh, this installment is going to be Cognos Analytics 11 Release 8. What I'll be showing you is using latitude and longitude in a map within report. I'll show you what we're going to be shooting for is something that looks similar to this where we've uh, charted some Latin longs, we've colored it based on uh, a certain measurable value, in my case I believe it's gross margin, and then adding a label on it so I have some additional context to that lat long point. Go ahead and select new, and I've already uploaded my file, and again if you've uploaded data you'll need to create a data module from that uploaded file. Once you have the data prepared, go ahead and select report. I'm going to use a blank report, and to start with, I'm going to do a little bit of formatting by just using some, uh, some tables. I'm going to do a two-column, one-row for my side-by-side, -side, and then I'm going to do a, um, a uh, one-column, three-row um, in the first cell. And again, that's just to kind of help me organize uh, my data here. I'm going to select my source, go to my content, that's where mine's selected. I'm going to select my data module. So I have my data in now. And then I'm going to select where I want my map. And again, my map is going to go on the left side, so I'm going to, or on the right side, excuse me. So I'm going to hit the plus sign there and select visualization. Because the map functionality has been increased to use latitude and longitude, all I need to do is select map and hit OK. In the top right corner where it says region, I'm going to select the drop down arrow and change that to latitude, longitude. And now I can see I've got places to drop my latitude and longitude from my data set. Go ahead and drag latitude into latitude, longitude into longitude. Any label you'd like to see, you can apply to the label property. I'm going to use the name, drop that into label. And then the color I want to be based on my uh, gross margin. I'm going to add my prompts to this uh, cell here, so I'm going to select my toolbox. And in here, I'm going to search for a value prompt. I'm going to drag that in. I'm going to provide one bit of context here for the region. Selecting my region from my uh, data set. And it's going to be a single select, but I do want to make it optional. I'm going to make a new query. And again, I'm going to name my query queue region. And I'm going to select finish. Now I can select a region. I'm going to add a cell underneath this one. I'm going to actually add two cells. The next one I want to drag in, I'm going to make this one a state selection. So I'm going to type in state. I'm going to select my state from my data set. In this case, it's actually called country subdivision. I'm going to make this a multi-select, so I'm going to change the operator to in, and again, I'm going to make it optional. I only want it to filter query one, which is my map. And I want to name it Q state. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cascade that off of the region just so my queries run a little bit quicker. Select finish. Last one, I'm going to need a prompt button. So here's my prompt button. Drag that in. I'm going to change that to be finish. All right. All of that being done, I might want to change my map and make it a little bit larger. I'm going to say in the map for width, I want it to be 1500 pixels, and a height, I want it to be 750. Now go ahead and run your report. And as it renders, you'll actually see the map zoom in on the data I have available to me. In my region drop-down, I'm going to go ahead and select a different region. Let's say I want to analyze region 6. When I hit finish, you'll notice the data points are only available for region 6 now, and my map automatically adjusts. If I'm interested in only certain states, I can control click multiple states, because we had it set to multi-select, and I can select finish to focus my data in even further. If there's a particular area I'm interested, I can actually use my scroll wheel to zoom in even further. And again, once I find a data point I want to analyze, I can hover over it to see the label provided as well as the measurable value. Thanks for watching.
If you found this video helpful, please like it, as well as subscribe to our channel. And as always, visit us at www.ecapitaladvisors.com.